Can you guys hear like the running and stuff that's happening? We can hear our adorable little voice. Come here. Come here, girly. All right, I need you to say something right into this microphone. Okay? You got to hit it with the... News. Yeah. News. Yeah. News. <laughs> Who's that? Uncle Jay. Uncle Trey. Hey, baby, why? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from all over, welcome back to New Heights, a Jukes original show presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. New Heights is a show that doesn't dress up, it dresses as. <laughs> we'll get back. I think I see what we'll you get, did there. We'll get to more of that later, man. But we are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big bro, Jason Kelsey, out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio, University of Cincinnati, Bearcat alums. New Heights comes to you every single Wednesday with a new episode. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with one S. Jason, what we got? Got a great show, Trev. As All always, right All we're right gonna, uh, first we're going to talk about the uh, whooping, as A.J. Brown called it, Open up that the whoop-a. Eagles gave his former team, the Titans. Mm. And uh, then we're going to touch on the Chiefs' unfortunate tough loss for the third time this year. Got to hold on to the ball, bud. Got to hold on to the ball. And uh, we might even touch into some uh, college football talk. A oh, little playoffs. Little Got some coaching changes going coaches on. coaches going everywhere, man. This is exciting times. Yeah. Playoffs. playoffs. Talk about playoffs? Playoffs. But first, new news. New news. Oh, my gosh. Now my voice cracked like Pat. All right, anyways. Still the number one sports podcast in the world. Matter of fact, no matter not, just, no. not just sports podcasts. We cracked the top three of all mm. podcasts last week, thanks to our uh, episode mm. with uh, Pat Mahomes. Uh, the, uh, the Pat almost, Mahomes effect. He makes everything better. It's unbelievable. One. Almost hit number one on Spotify. Uh, but pretty hard to compete with the the Joe Rogan experience. But yeah. either way, thank you so much to our listeners. Uh, I mean, that was a really awesome episode. We were certainly excited Too to much share fun, it, without a and, doubt, and glad everyone enjoyed it. Um, so uh, yeah, let's uh, you know, can't thank you enough for all the support, and uh, let's keep these things rolling. Keep these things rolling, baby. Fan reactions to the uh, Mahomes episode from Ron Cop. Old it Ronnie. can't be overstated how cool of a listen this is as a Chiefs fan. Feel like you're a fly on the wall in the room that they don't even know it's being recorded. I think that's kind of the way we felt. Yeah, 100%. I was actually in such shock when he started talking about the draft stories and and his first uh, encounter with Coach Reed. I was like sitting there like I didn't even know how to react to it. I was like, hold on, are we going to have to erase this? Are we going to have to edit this out? <laughs> like, is this, are you okay with sharing this? Are this is sure okay. This I'm is like cool. looking around in the room for all the Chiefs guys. Like, this is good, right? We're we're good on this. All right, yeah. We're just letting this, this happen. Is crazy. He just said he drafted himself. <laughs> <laughs> it was nuts, man. Yeah, and I think, um, yeah, I, I think every time we wrap up one of these, whenever the uh, when the producers say, "All right, let's uh, stop recording," I'm like, "We were recording this whole time." <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were still just kind of bullshit. All right, exactly. Uh, that's the uh, that's the fortune of doing this with an edit button. You know what I mean? Oh, like sure. you can just cut it loose. If this thing was live, I'd be way more like. Yeah, let's hope those clips don't get in there. All yeah. right, here we go. <laughs> we got a, another shout out on the episode from Justin Freeman, eighteen New Heights Jake podcast. Free. New Heights podcast with Jason Kelsey and T. Kelsey just jumped to the top of my podcast rotation. All right. Awesome hand in the dirt stories and conversations. Bring on the last five episodes this weekend. Binging the last five episodes this weekend. Uh, Kelsey bros are very entertaining. That's good to hear. Appreciate that, Justin, man. Appreciate you listening in. in. Yeah. Uh, That's good to know. We're going to try and keep these uh, good stories rolling. Heck yeah. Hand in the dirt stories, man. Let's go. Another one from Deep Underground Pod. Deep Underground. That just sounds like a dirty... The Underground Pod. Oh, wait. D Underground. I get pod. Like the... I don't know where my mind was at. (laughs) Deep under. Get this Deep Underground Pod. All right. Listen, if you know, you know. D Underground Pod. Shout out to T. Kelsey for rocking the football tan lines. If you know what I mean. Uh, if you know, I don't even you think know. what that is. Is that what that is? I'm not. You know, I'm not hip you know. to the. If you know, I you know. Y- Got it. K Y K. If you know, you know. Meaning, yeah. 
my hand right here is completely different skin color than the hand right here because I wear yeah. gloves every single day I'm out in the sun. That's true. Um, so I got natural tan lines on my hands, and they're much paler, pastier, Let way more you, white. It's worth it when you wear those Ronald McDonald gloves, those yellow gloves. It is so easy to spot you on the field. It's the best thing ever because yeah. I always know where 87 is. Just when we play those teams that don't have yellow in their jerseys, real easily, real easy to get caught holding. <laughs> oh, I didn't you think about that. You get those hands that. outside. It's yeah. a little different. Yeah. But unfortunately, nobody actually has yellow jerseys in the NFL, so All that right. never plays into my favor. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, well. Eagles fans came through with a new height sign after my game, walking off the field. The Kelsey chant, man. Yeah, they were doing that too. Legendary. Yeah, that was nice. nice. Man. Very nice of them. That's uh, like that's like you you're on the same like stage as Rocky because they I feel like they Rocky, Rocky. Like that was part Adrian! of the movie, right? Kylie! <laughs> She's got a really Kylie! She's yeah. gonna think you're calling for her right now. Yeah, you're right. Uh <laughs> I don't actually need you, Kylie. It's just a joke. She definitely was coming down. All right. Um yeah, but walking off the field. So Eagles fans, they're on the sign committee now. New Heights sign at the game. We're a part of just it. Just had to call them out. Just had to Shout call out. them out. Shout out. Yeah, yeah. Signed it. Signed the sign. Signed the sign. Signed the sign. Well played. Listen, I'm signing signs and I'm signing babies. <laughs> I believe it when I see you sign a baby, man. I cannot wait to sign my first baby forehead. It's going to be like a newborn sign. Draw a mustache on it. <laughs> Do it, Andy Reid. Andy Reid him. <laughs> now you have to signature across the forehead. Andy Reid stash. Andy Reid stash with a little handlebar. Oh, uh, I can't wait for the degenerate parent that allows me to do this to their child. <laughs> I might do it to my own baby. Might have to wait till Don't February. You Don't you dare! <laughs> All righty, uh, that's pretty good. Well, the biggest new news you guys have been asking, and here it is: we got merch. Merch, baby. You see us rocking it. It's finally in. The it's New Heights in. merch. Always we, feels a little awkward when you have your name across your T-shirt. but It, it is a little it's weird. It's for everyone. It's for everyone. You we're know? wearing really? it so you guys can see it, and we think it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, we're, in particular, really uh, happy to partner with Homage, another Homage, Ohio, another Ohio. Ohio Roots. Keeping uh, the Ohio Roots together. That's right. Uh, the official apparel partner of the New Heights show. Um, so, yeah. Go ahead Absolutely. and check it I, out. I, I, we, we've been we've been on the homage train for quite a while now. You guys have already seen me uh, wear a NBA Jam style, NFL yeah, Jam yeah. style shirt that Jason has on right now. Uh, says Kelsey Jam with me and Jason and our attributes on there. You saw me rocking one earlier in the season with uh, me and Pat Mahomes on there as a tandem. But um, I, I'm partic- this one particularly hits home because um, I never. We grew up in the era of playing arcade the arcades, games. Yeah. So NBA Jam, NBA Hang Time, uh, Blitz, Blitz. Like those those sports games are always my favorite. They still are my favorite to play. One hundred percent. Yeah. And I like it's it, it brings back a lot of nostalgia with the uh, graphics of the stat lines. Oh yeah. Um, a little upset with my speed rating. Uh, I yeah. think I'm faster than that. I think if you're faster than that, then I'm faster than what my speed rating is too. No, I you're about they, right. They kinda, you're about right. They got I think my speed rating should be right about where your speed <laughs> rating is. Faster? <laughs> Who's faster, me or you? Are we, how how far is the race? <laughs> you're right. We did this in college, and you, and you said ten yards, and I was like, "All right, deal." And you shot out of a fucking cannon. <laughs> did I, I beat like, you? <laughs> yes. I do not remember that. I remember this. It was. I uh, think I, I wasn't think even I, embarrassed because everybody I'm, was like, "Damn, he's fast!" And I was like, "All right, well, at least they're more amazed by Jason winning than they are." But I'm me. sneaky <laughs> fast. I'm sneaky fast. Got a quick get off. Um, Who? Good thing there's not a snap snap line. Otherwise, my uh, my my snap attribute would be fully red. <laughs> just not even a green. <laughs> yeah, all just, just a negative, all negative, the not way just red. a little negative all the way. Yeah. Good Listen, he's no a great way. center. He's going to get a lot of blocks. <laughs> But there's going to be a couple of plays a game where you're not going to be too happy with them. All right, here we go. Uh, you could say what that a, yeah. fumble stat line. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> all right, here we go. Moving forward, we do appreciate all your guys' support, and uh, we got a little bit of a surprise for you. Not only are we wearing it to show you guys, we are live right now in selling these tees online. Uh, just go to homage.com slash newheights to check out all the uh, tees. We got some pretty sweet ones, man. 
<laughs> got one of these Kelly Green's game day fits, baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty good. That's a pretty gonna, good shirt. We're gonna have to have to add the uh, mesh uh, uh, Pee Wee League football jersey to the Be game. You want to see the Yeti, man? That's my favorite one. See the Yeti. I'll be rocking that. Uh, so we got we got some fun tees on there. So please uh, go over there and support the way the ways that you can, man. Also, if you love daily fantasy. We're going to shout out another sponsor of today's show, DraftKings. DraftKings. DraftKings is giving new customers a free shot at a share of millions of prizes with their first deposit. All new customers need to do is download the DraftKings app now and sign up using our promo code New Heights. You heard the man playing daily fantasy football is easy. Just pick your favorite players each week, enter contests, and win cash prizes weekly. And with a free shot at a share of millions of dollars in total prizes with your first deposit, it's the perfect time to show off your football game. So download the DraftKings app now and sign up using our promo code New Heights. This week, new customers can get a free shot at a share of millions of dollars in total prizes with your first deposit. Just enter the promo code New Heights to get a free shot at a share of millions of dollars in prizes with your first deposit. That's code New Heights, only at DraftKings. Well, the last sponsor might be the most important. Yeah, right. We're about to get into real football portion of this show. And uh, for those of you that have been listening since episode one, you know there's a half-decent chance we might get a little loud. We might be yelling about QB sneaks, wedge units, or God knows what else. So you need to make sure that you're listening to us using premium audio products from Raycon. They also make a great gift for anyone on your holiday shopping list. Raycon's wireless earbuds, headphones, and speakers offer premium sound, useful features, an almost custom comfortable fit, and they start at half the price of other premium audio products. And for the next month, Raycon will have a countdown to Christmas with a new pop-up flash deal for you to take advantage of every single day. So right now, for the best deal, go to buyraycon.com slash new heights to get 15% off site wide with code HOLIDAY mm. plus free shipping. That's code HOLIDAY at buyraycon.com slash new heights for 15% off Raycon purchases. Buyraycon.com slash new heights. Let's get back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Let's ride, Raycon. <laughs> Raycon Country, let's ride. Raycon Country, let's ride. Well, here we go. Let's tee up the 12 bold topics of this week. We always start with each other's games. I, I'll tee up the topics on Jason's game, and he'll do the same for mine. Um, and then we'll get into some uh, some stories that are going around the NFL. But uh, starting off with both of our games, Jason, you want to start with uh, – no, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll jump it off. Start with your guys' game. Start Eagles, with our game. Okay. 35 – Titans ten, yeah baby. You guys rolled them, man. That was a that was a tough team when we played them, man. That was a very tough team. Strong defensive line, you know. They got that toughness. Uh, old Mike Vrabel, their head ball coach. Um, but you guys yeah. went in there. You guys handled it, man. You guys handled it. Yeah, I mean they've been a tough team for a long time. Um, you know, this is a team that was the best team in the NFL just a year ago through the regular season, and they're built that way. You know, yeah. um, obviously tremendous coach and coach Vrabel. Uh, the defense is always solid, um, especially on the interior. You know that you're going to have our, hand, our, our hands full on the offensive line. Their defensive line team is uh, they're very, very strong up front. And, um, you know, offensively, uh, they can wear you out. They have probably the uh, best running back over the last five or so years in the league in Derrick Henry. Yeah. Um, and he's a guy that just seems to get better as the game goes on because yeah, people crazy, do not man. like to tackle him. Man. So, um, you know, we knew we were in man. store. Well, we knew we were in store for a tough game. We knew we were in store for a fist fight. And, um, you know, it certainly helps when, you know, Jalen Hurts and the receiving uh, crew play the way they did. Yeah. Um, you know, it felt like they were almost unstoppable in the uh, passing game. Yeah. Well, you had two receivers go over 100 yards. Um all together, three touchdowns in the air for uh, Jalen Hurts. A.J. Brown went for 119. Devontae Smith, skinny Batman out there getting five receptions for 102 and a tutty. You guys were just – you guys were flawless offensively, man. I'm not even sure. Did Jalen oh, even play the fourth quarter? Yeah. Not flawless. We had maybe our record-setting day with penalties up front. 
You guys um, scored 35 points and had a record day setting penalties? Dude, I'm not kidding you. That's, I think it's the that's pretty only, damn good. It's the only game I can remember that every player up front and the tight end were all penalized for something, whether it's a false <laughs> start, a holding. <laughs> really? Bro, I yeah, it was it was a bad day, and 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 Coach Shiriani, Nick, he was he was pissed off on the sideline. Um, you know, it's something that we definitely are going to have to address because you can't get away with that, uh, especially in closer games. Yeah. It's going to cost us, so we're going to have to fix that. Uh, but obviously, really, really happy with the performance offensively from, especially in the passing game. I mean, you know, last week ran the ball for three hundred sixty-five yards. This week we throw the ball. Uh, for almost 400 yards yeah um it really shows you the versatility of jalen hurts shows you uh you know how dynamic he can be in a lot of different ways and you know shows the creativity as of our offensive coaches i was about to say yeah it's sirianni man well it's not just those- sirianni but uh shane steichen the offensive coordinator uh you know uh obviously jeff stoutland the run game coordinator offensive line coach um i think that all of these guys do a phenomenal job of putting the plays together each week. Shane calls up and dials them up pretty well. Um, so I think, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's good to know that you can do all of these things because 100%. you never know what's yeah. going to be available on the game day, right? You, we right. all game plan each and every week for everything going to be successful. But once you get out there, okay, what's working, what's hitting. And uh, what are they trying can, to stop? How are exactly. we able to best, you know, attack that? Yeah, what, yep. Without a doubt. So, um, you know, it's been uh, the last two weeks offensively have been have been fun to be a part of. Hopefully we can keep it rolling. Uh, well, I know the season. I know one guy who had an absolute blast and it was A.J. Brown, baby. We oh, yeah. Last week it was his revenge game yeah. going against his old team, the team that traded him, traded him away during yeah. contract talks. Um, I believe it was contract talks. Uh, but either way, um, traded him for a draft pick. Or two, and um, yeah, came out and had eight receptions for 119 yards and two touchdowns on his old ball team. Yeah, I mean, I was really happy for AJ. Um, you know, one to just have a good game, but you know, I think you know this this game obviously meant more to him. Uh, you know, we've talked about it before. We've only been with one team, so we we don't know a lot of the emotion that goes into guys playing their former teams. Uh, but it seemed like there's there was something in the air with this one, um, and I think. Coach Sirianni and the Eagles coaches certainly did their best to not make it a distraction or an overarching theme. Yeah. But I think everybody was excited for AJ to have a good game and to and to make some plays. Um, obviously, their defense is really good, but if there's one area they had struggled in, it was in uh, the passing attack. And um, so going in, I think everybody, without saying it, was like, okay, let's see what AJ's about to do. And, man, he did not disappoint. Um, I mean, he is so hard – to stop from an athleticism standpoint, from a physicality standpoint. He literally it, chucked a guy on one of his touchdowns. Dude, it was crazy. Yeah. I don't know how you could do that. I've, I've actually done that before and gotten flagged for it. But it's <laughs> impressive that, you know, he can still run through mid-route and be able to track a ball, you know. He while, caught a ball literally around the defensive back on one of them. He just, like, was – so, I mean, silly. he was he was certainly fired up. And to have that kind of game against your former team is huge. And – um yeah. You know, I still remember when we traded for him. I mean, that happened live on yeah, Bleacher Report. Adam Lefko, I, baby. Yeah, I'm over here doing a draft segment with Adam Lefko. I think I'm all prepared. I got everything dialed up on all these offensive linemen, defensive what? linemen. Yeah. What? And all did of a sudden just, it comes – yeah. Did we just get – And I'm like, dude, did that really just – I, I like, think I'm kind of being like – because Lefko had already punked me before at an event of yours – I'm like, is Lefko double punking me? Is he punking me again? And uh, not about the Eagles. Yeah, we don't we don't play about the Eagles. So I'm over here kind of tempering my reaction live because I'm like, listen, we just got like a game changing player in the NFL, but I also know that you know there's there's a whole other team and receivers and all these other guys are going to be affected. So I'm like, am I a, am I supposed to be really excited? Am I supposed to? Be? And I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> Let's do going. this. One We're of the all best in. Weapons in the National Football League. Hell yeah, you can be excited. So. um and it hasn't disappointed, you know. He's been an incredible addition to our team, not just as a player, but he's just a great dude, a great person. Everybody likes him in the rooms. Oh yeah, and um, and that's where you really win in a situation like that, man. A guy comes in and he's not a head case, he's not a distraction, he's not anything more than just a good teammate and a great ball player, man. That's when it works out the best, man. Yeah, and you know the, the Eagles are always cognizant of that. It feels like we always some. I don't know. I feel like we've always had a good locker room. I can't remember too many guys 
that have been issues or created that type of drama and whatnot in, in, in our building. Um, and that's a credit to, you know, Howie and uh, all the scouts and the coaches who, uh, who vouch for these guys, but and um, the leaders, the leaders that they choose to keep around 100%. Yeah. I know you're being humble about that, but I do, I do think that everybody has the respect out of you to, you know, kind of fall in line when it comes to stuff like that and follow the same thing with a defensive lineman coming in under Fletcher and, and B. Graham, Graham, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's just, it's the PG. same thing, you know? You kind of have that mentality already set in stone. It's a, it's a culture now. You yeah, know? We, we've had good players and good people and, and a great culture for a long time, and that's something that we came into, uh, me, BG, and Fletch, all with the Eagles before that. You know, you guys like Brent Selleck, Todd Harriman's, uh, you know, Brian Dawkins. I mean, the, the, there's so many great personalities that have been mainstays in the Eagles organization, and that's one thing I think they do really well. But, yeah, certainly A.J. Brown, is, uh, it's been a pretty awesome addition for us and had an unbelievable game this past week. Such a good game. The the Titans GM ironically got yeah. asked to leave. Yeah. And that's all I'll say about it. Uh, I mean, Eagles defense. Yeah. Eagles defense. I'll tell you what, man. We were just talking about that D-line. I think it's five guys, six guys recorded a sack. Yeah. Derek, I mean, they, Derek they Henry held to 11 carries for 30 yards. I mean, once you get up on a, on a team like that uh, – it's uh, it's it's hard to get their mojo going, you know, because they they do so much in terms of the run game and then the counter off of the run game. That uh, if you get up on them and you force them to pass, you can put them in a tough situation. But yeah. um, the D line absolutely feasted. One of the one of the things that has turned into a phrase for our defense. I don't know who came up with it, but I love it, and it seems like they've gravitated towards it. Is you have to earn the right to rush the passer. In other words. You got to be successful on first and second down to get them in a situation where you can feast yeah. on the rush and the passer, right? Touché. They um, they are really hanging their hat on being successful against the run, and uh, they know if they can get into situations where a team is forced to throw the ball, that with the horses they got on up front, it's and and the DBs they have in the back to be able to make the quarterback hold it just an extra second. Yeah. Uh, you know, the last two weeks have been something special to watch from our pass rush. Uh, all the games, all the straight up rushes, all the guys on the inside, the edge rushers that we have. Um, I mean, it is a complete group. And, um, you know, I certainly, speaking from an offensive lineman's perspective, uh, I would not want to be blocking these guys um, in situations where they know we're throwing the ball. And that's going to be yeah. tough sledding. No, I hear you on that. Sue tweeted post game. It just gets better and better. Feels like I made the right choice, which then good. makes me question who was the other choice. Yeah, I don't want to say that's I don't, what makes me. <laughs> question. I'm, like, I'm sitting over here like, God damn, are we were we time out. Talk? So there was a there were choices. There, was, there was a choices. There were choices. Were there two? Who was knows? Kansas City, one of them. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Um, the defense has only allowed one touchdown in the second half over the last six games. Yeah. Kind of just goes right into what you're saying, man. These guys are, are taking every single down serious, yeah. uh, not giving up a single thought. And then on top of that, making adjustments. Making adjust That's all the second half stats are, just adjustments. How are we adjusting to what this other side of the ball is doing? Yep. And, um, and how are we executing that? Yeah, I mean, they, that's that's right, right there. And, I mean, we've been – you know, we've been up to, you know, I think we've, we've put opposing offenses in, you know, situations where Tough it's situation, stressful to yeah. execute and uh, the defense has made great adjustments and they're, they're, I mean, they got great players. I mean, let's not fool ourselves. If you look across the board on the uh, players that we have on defense, there it's ain't pretty, a lot of weaknesses. It's pretty you know, good. There's some really good players on that side of the ball. Guys that have played at a very high level in the league for a long time. Oh, we yeah. combine that with great coaches Usually adds up. I so. hear you on that. And then you add those two rookies that you guys got, them Georgia yeah. boys. Nicobe finally getting some, some and Jordan extended Davis. playing time. Yeah. Got JD Jordan coming back, back from injury. You guys look at this win as, man, that was that was a win you can really hang your hat on, or is it one of the better wins of the season? Like, did well, you guys feel comfortable and confident going into it? Or, I mean, because that's 
That's a team that, you know, if there's anything they could say about the defense is the run game. And if they're if, if, if that's just what's been in the past, you know. Um yep. and then if there's something, you know, to say about your offense is limiting those possessions. They they have the makeup to be able to do both of those things. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, you know, obviously we still got games left. You know, we're not at the end of the season yet. So yep. we're not where we want to be. But certainly happy with the performance. You know what I mean? I mean, th- if if you look at you know, you know, if if I'm being, you know, objective about our team, or like trying to like pinpoint what's a way that a team would beat us, um, it would be on offense, run the football, take up time of possession, and limit the amount of opportunities that our offense gets. Um, you know, we have a lot of playmakers on offense. We can put up a lot of points, but in order to do that, you have to have the ball. Yeah. And uh, defensively, uh, you know, there are games where we've struggled a little bit to stop the run. But recently, that has not been the case. And I don't know if that's additions, adjustments, what's going on, but they have been very stifling against what has been one of the best rushing attacks this past week for the against the Titans Yeah. Uh, over the a number of years now. So it's a big win for us. It really is. Um, you know, obviously, we got to sustain it. We got another tough task coming this week with the New York Giants, um, and uh, but yeah, if we can stop the run and we can play uh, defense like that, um, yeah, that that's, that bodes well for sure. Well, we know uh, we know about the game, and it was hats off to the Eagles, but the Eagles' performance was not the one that went viral, my well, friend. It, it went viral. Most important? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. What really went viral was Jason Kelsey's. Dress up on game day. Well, well, game day fit. It's not dressing no. up. It's like dressing up. <laughs> you dressed up, dude. Dressed you acted up. like it was Halloween in December. What do you mean? No, dress you dressed up. up as a character. No, that I wore an outfit. I wore a game day outfit. That was an outfit. That was somebody else's outfit. You dressed up as somebody. You didn't. Dr- you didn't. You didn't outfit as somebody. You dressed up as somebody. Yeah, but when I was alluding to the dress up, I'm talking about the guys that dress up. Like you wear stuff that like you normally wouldn't wear because it's like a uh, uh, like a like a like a like a like it's Halloween, a black tie event. Well, I mean, but dress up, I don't know. I don't. I think it's different. I think it's different. So, so you dress down. I uh, I dressed as. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the world who you dressed as for those that don't know. So I I dressed as and how uh, it came about. I dressed as Doug, uh, Drew Barrymore's brother in the movie Fifty First Dates. One of uh, take out the my- glutes. <laughs> it's protein shakes. Uh, I um, always loved that movie. My wife and I love that movie. Um, Adam Sandler uh, never uh, uh, you know the best, leaves man. you. Yeah, it, always uh, a great movie with him. On. Always entertaining on the screen. But um, yeah, there was a tweet that somebody tweeted out about what I was wearing during the Mahomes interview. And it was like, you kind of remind me of this guy. And then I tweeted back, uh, if anybody can find me that shirt, I will buy it immediately. <laughs> to which case, a bunch of people showed me where I can get those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, apparently those shirts are really easy to come by. And I was like, okay, I'm going to regret this. Uh, but yeah, the, I mean. Where would the shorts come from? I had those shorts. <laughs> Just sitting in the Those are. Those uh, kind of Saved by the Bell, shorts, uh, 80s shorts style. And belt. Shorts and belt were just in the closet. Well, I went to the weight room to get the belt. <laughs> Got the belt from the weight room, had the had the shorts in the closet, rocked the the Pat Mahomes Oakleys that I had bought after doing the uh, interview with him. Yes, sir. And um, so, yeah. Those look sharp. Those look sharp. They yeah, were great. Honestly. You walked in with such confidence. Nobody can say shit about any of it. it Pat McAfee said, one of the coolest dudes on earth. <laughs> said he's, uh, That boy set the tempo, set the tone for game day. For just about everybody, you guys had the had the early game. So was, I even saw that. I was like, oh, all right. That boy, yeah. boy coming ready to go today. You got to have fun with it. So <laughs> You always got to have fun with it, especially when you dress up. Uh, dress as. When you do stuff like that, obviously it can either be a distraction or it can – you know, keep everything loose and you can show your personality. Coach Reed is on he's on record saying it all the time. He'd rather a guy show his personality than to hold back and, and yeah. be more tense or tightened up. Uh, so did, did anybody, you know, look at you sideways when you did it or was it all just fun and games? And I, It seemed like everybody liked it. 
apparently coach apparently Nick Sirianni was texting everybody a picture of it on the coaching staff before the game. So I think guys thought it was funny, which is what I was going for. Um, you know, big, big Adam Sandler fan too. All right. <laughs> yeah. So I think you know, I mean, you know, you never know. Um, well, you do know. I think there's times where you know when it's appropriate, acceptable to be kind of funny, goofing around. Uh, and you know, I know pregame would seem like not that type of situation, I've right? That. I've been playing that freaking right here my yeah, whole but, life, just playing that I mean, border, man. You can't be too serious, man. You got to remember, at the end of the day, we're all out here playing a game. We're having fun. Um, you got to be serious when you're on the field. No question about that. Uh, but – Hey man, opening up and being yourself around your teammates, I think that helps teams come together. I think that helps people come together. Um, you know, there's a lot of people uh, that I'm sure uh, appreciate it. So I, uh, I sure did. I'm glad Sean Aston appreciated it. There we because, go. Uh, he's been a long time role model ever since. Rudy, Rudy. Uh, you know, I was a walk on linebacker, so uh, the movie Rudy was like. Uh, you know, a uh, uh, your life. A, yeah, it, it felt like it, and I would, and I'm not gonna lie, I've I've cried. It's a it's a great movie. There's um, no way you were you were anywhere near Rudy's. Like you were like Rudy was. Yeah, I'm not even gonna get into it. You're talking about like an undersized like. <clears throat> yes. Like, what like like not- you look. You look at Rudy. No offense to Sean, but you look at Rudy. That's well, he's that's not actually a prototypical Rudy, football player. Yeah, gotcha. you look yeah. at Sean. You know what I mean. And yeah. then you look at you, and it's like, no, you know, that's not comparable. Well, either way, still was a walk on. Uh, nobody thought he could do it, and uh, yeah. So I, I don't know. The movie Rudy has always struck a chord with me. So uh, to get you heard it uh, here, boys, all the walk ons out here. All that is is just a title, baby. You can change that in a heartbeat, and you can be one of the best that ever did it. All righty, Trav, you ready for this? Don't fuck. Don't build it up. All right, let's sorry. just go. I'm sorry. Chiefs lose to the Bengals. Yeah. 24 27. We got to talk about it. Of course we do. Um, yeah. That's off to the Bengals. Yeah. Uh, they o- got me. Yeah. You guys are 0 and 3 against the Bengals. Um, all time versus Joe Burrow. Matter of fact, you're 0 and 3. You, you told me this. I didn't even know that. You guys are 0 and 3. 2022. In 2022. Man. You guys played them early last year, then the playoff game, and now this year. Um, yeah, I mean, what's how you guys feeling? What's the mood of the team? Uh, obviously, close game came down to the wire. Uh, just couldn't quite get it done. Yeah, um, I handed him one, man. I handed him one as much as I've, uh, you know, talked about being accountable and at my best when the team needs me to be at my best in critical moments. I wasn't, and it's unfortunate, man. It's a uh, the shit stings. I ain't been uh I ain't had much energy since. I've been trying to, you know, get get the juices going and, and, and get excited about, you know, the Denver Broncos this week. But uh that one that shit stings, man. And it's uh the way I the way I wasn't accountable for my guys, uh knowing how big of a moment that was and having ball security is the utmost you know, number one thing that needs to be on your mind when you have the ball in your hand in a moment like that. Um a guy I Got caught down by my hip trying to break through a tackle, and uh, he got a good grasp on it early. and saw me fighting for it, and uh, sure enough, that thing popped out, and I I let the uh, the dreams, goals, and aspirations of the entire team out as well when that happened. So it was just uh, not being accountable and um, digging ourselves a hole that 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 we didn't even need to dig. Well, let's let's not jump off the bridge just yet. Uh, I think that. Obviously, there are more plays in the game than just that play. I know you're hard on yourself. Obviously, that was a big play in the game. It's obvious. But, you know, what else have the Bengals done to kind of slow you guys down offensively? Like, what what has been their, uh, I guess, answer for the Chiefs? How have they been able to do this? Because, you know, like we said, it's three straight games. What what has really led to – Play mistake-free football, not turn the ball over. Uh, you know, yeah. I think uh, when you get down to it, penalties, uh, mistakes that uh, that we made, uh, and then on top of that, got to beat drop eight coverage, man. Even when they're uh, they're dropping eight, we got to find a way to to get open in voids and um, and get open for Pat, and then on top of that, protect them back there. Yeah. Um, so it's just there's 
there's uh it's all fixable stuff i mean if i hold on to that ball we go down there score at least a you know whatever if we get a field goal we get a touchdown we're still up uh and it's just uh it's one of those you got to eat and you got to learn from it and you got to make sure that you're accountable the next time and that's and that's just the bottom line man well we keep touching on the the fumble obviously what goes through your mind after that fumble in the middle of the game because it wasn't the end of the game. You guys still had other opportunities left. One hundred percent, and that was that's the that's the energy you got to refocus and 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 put it towards. Um, obviously, I'm thinking every time I touch the ball now, you know, hold on to that fucking thing with your life. Not that I wasn't before. Yeah. I actually think that I have good ball security, um, and that I practice that all the time. You know, when I'm in tight quarters. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, you know, it's uh once once it happens, it's kind of a situation where even though they scored. Uh, they're only up three. We got an opportunity to go up four if we execute. We had plenty of time to drive the ball down the field. We got into strike. We got into striking range and kind of stalled out. Um, Pat, you know, got some pressure. It was just uh, it was uh, guys weren't getting open, and Pat got pressure. It is what it is, and uh, yeah. we got to find ways to execute in those big time moments. Um, yeah, and, and and at the end of the day, come away with points. Come away with something. Don't just let them uh, get the ball back on the 40-yard line with an opportunity to close the game out. And, uh, yeah. You talked about, um, you know, there's drills and stuff that you do with ball security. When you have something like that happen, are you, like, this week going to be doing more drills? Or is it kind of just like, you know, that's a one-time deal and you're just going to keep doing what you do and just now focus on it more? I mean – Naturally, after you fumble, you already have that, like I said, that mentality of hold, the, hold, squeeze the living shit out of the ball from right. here on out. You know, so I don't, I don't want to put too much emphasis on it. The more I focus on that, the less I become the player that I am, sure. uh, where I can think free and play free. Uh, but it's, uh, it's obviously lost us a game in my mind. So I gotta, I gotta do something to, to fix that. So, well, let's, yeah, I think, and you hit the nail on that. I mean, listen, feels terrible when it happens, um, but yeah. You can't let that take away from the dog you've been and you're going to continue to be. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah. hey, only not to make – I'm not making excuses for you. I'm not bringing the excuse train into the station for you. But, you know, you've only had four fumbles in the last four seasons. Uh, those are pretty low stats. Obviously, you want it to be zero. Um, and that was an incredibly important part of the game. But um, – At this point, I'm just hitching at the bit to get out and get back out there, and, you know – prove that I am who who I, I know I can be. Yeah. And that's, that's all that you can really do about it. All right. Air Mahomes. Let's talk about the unbelievable play in the this guy, man. In the red zone. Looking for something Third to happen. Down. Third down. Doesn't see anything open. Kinda sees a little seam in the middle. Sees in the, it in a the little middle. bit. Yeah. Sees it's not it that open bit. though. It's not there, but committed to it and commits then, to I, it. I, Boy I'm does sta- he I'm telling you. I'm Went standing up. I'm standing in the end zone watching this whole thing unfold and you just see I'm like I see everyone closing. I'm like, well, yeah. I know Pat Pat he has some weight to him. He could truck him. You well, thought I he was gonna truck him. I think sometimes he lowers his shoulder depending on who it is, but I think he saw think he the two right. guys I that think were he chose com- right. <laughs> I think he saw the two guys who were coming at him and decided that Going up top was the was the best decision, man. And, Jumps. Um, I, did you know he could get up like that? Uh, yeah. Pat's an athletic guy. Yeah, I, yeah. I've seen him. I've seen him get up. He's he's still he's still banging out. You know what I'm saying? He's still dunking it. He's good. He's Pat not he's dunk. not that old yet. Yeah. Oh yeah. When he uh, so he got, when he he's jumped, got baby bunnies. When he jumped and you saw him reach, what is your first thought? When you reach that thing's got to go across because if it doesn't, <laughs> it's coming out. It's definitely coming out. Yeah, that is. Uh, yeah, but it's an all or nothing play. Listen, the great ones figure it out. Putting his body on the line, you could tell he wanted it, man. He wanted it more than more than most, and uh, yeah, that was that's a, that's another reason, man. A lot of the guys went into that game with uh, with you know a little playing with a little bit more, and that's why uh, yeah, it just that one sucked, but. Yeah, Shout out well, to Pat Mahomes for uh, for for showing his uh, his love for the game and his love for his teammates by putting his body on the line and finding a way to get in the end zone right there, man. I know you guys, uh, obviously, you in particular, are not feeling too great after this one, but I got a feeling this is not the last uh, time you're going to see these guys um, this year. So I hey, wouldn't be upset at it. Yeah, I know that. Well, maybe we should leave the goal line dunking to you. You went on Stephen A. Smith's show. 
I've had a few goal line dunks. Yeah, well, you went on Stephen A. Smith's show, and you said, give me a 10-day contract, baby. Time out, man. Hold on, hold on. I'll show just, my worth not, real quick. You're not about to just come on here and say that I went on ESPN and just was like, man, what? These guys out here, I could do what they're doing. You I didn't, went on didn't, ESPN a, and said that you could play in the NBA. That's exactly said, what just happened. I said after this season – what is there? I forget how Stephen A. asked the question, but I'm of course I'm not going to back down. If somebody asked me if I would get an opportunity at the MLB, I'd say yeah, I'd find a way to get in the lineup. There's no chance. What are you talking about? Michael Jordan couldn't play in the Major League Baseball. It's because he was real lanky. I'm more compact. It's a different aspect. Travis, you are you are a lanky. <laughs> you are. I would for sure Listen, describe you as lanky. Swing that bat, ball. Swing that bat. <laughs> well. Oh you definitely said you could play in the NBA, but let's ask this. So we I'll always say hear. This. I'll say this. I'll say this. I think I could find a role on an NBA team. I'm not saying that I'm better than any NBA player. I'm saying that there is a role for me on the team if I am on the team. I could find a way to be productive while I'm out there on the court for sure. We, all, we always hear, you know, LeBron would be like unstoppable in the NFL. Yeah. Some of the way, NBA. way, way more, way more suited for an NBA guy to be an NFLer than an NFLer to well, be an NBA. That's guy. what I'm about to ask. So we know that NBA guys could definitely play in the NFL. Yeah, for sure. Okay, is the reverse? Do you think there's NFL players that could play in the NBA? Outside of the guys that like made the transition from basketball, because there's guys that make that transition all the time. And I'm talking about yeah, guys that have played basketball for all that. Yeah, I would say Jimmy Graham could have definitely played in the NBA. I see – no, no. Not a ch- he would have played Not in the chance. NBA. This is mean? my argument. There's guys Any- that rebound that just come in for rebound and – Yeah, but all of those guys were better – Block shots. All of those guys were better NBA players and better basketball players. See, but that's the thing. They got – they earned the right to be – a rebounder and a, 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 a role player on an NBA team by still being great basketball players before that. I'm not going to disagree that there aren't NFL players that could play a role on an mm-hmm. NBA team. I just don't think any of them are good enough to play in the NBA. Otherwise, they'd be playing in the NBA. It's that simple. Every NFL player would rather play in the well, NBA. But at the same time, would you rather be an end-of-the-bench guy in the NBA or be a star tight end in the National Football League? I'd rather be an end of the bench guy in the NBA. What are you talking about? That sounds like a great gig. Know, I'm gonna come fantastic. on, play like barely any minutes, just play a little bit of defense, rebound. I don't even have to shoot. Yeah, give me my, give me a ten day. Let me yeah, see. Yeah, that, that sounds guy, like man. a great gig. Um, listen, I'd have to I drop like thirty pounds. I never. I so the first time I ever sat courtside for an NBA game was when I realized that there is not a chance. Any NFL player can play with these dudes. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Tell, tell them who you watched. So I'm at uh, – my brother used to have uh, tickets for the Cleveland uh, Cavaliers. So you're, you're not you're, – he doesn't have another brother, ladies and gentlemen. He's talking about me. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> Travis used to have tickets courtside to the Cleveland Cavaliers. And uh, early in my career, I went down there. And I sat courtside, watched LeBron. I forget. I think they were LeBron playing. LeBron James. Well, you LeBron, saw LeBron. James. I think Kyrie was still on the team. Another like, one. There, there were some. Athlete. There were some beasts. There were some beasts on there. It's freaks, just unbelievable athletes. Athletes, you see them play and you see them move, and you're like, that's. But it that's wasn't not just them. regular. It wasn't just them, Travis. It, it was, was the whole thing. I'm sitting there, and I, <laughs> I think when you're on the same level of these you guys, you got impressed. Uh, you got uh, impressed by Zruno Silgowskis. When you're on the same level as these guys, it is a whole nother world. You really get a grasp for how tall they are and how, not just that, how tall, how fast, it, but how explosive. coordinated they are. Yeah. Dude, it's crazy. The amount yeah. of body control, footwork, co- hand-eye coordination, the athleticism level of NBA talent. I mean, it's not even close Yeah, to like... And maybe it's because I play offensive line and I'm around a bunch of fat guys all day and it's way different. <laughs> but I'm, I am I have not seen that caliber athlete in an NFL uniform yet. Just saying. Jimmy A.J. Brown, Brown A.J. Brown's a freak. I, I saw LeBron James do a spin move and a dunk, and it happened. You, you it gotta happened see so guys fast. like you guys got you got to so see fast. guys like Devontae Adams play basketball. You got to see guys like AJ Green play basketball. I mean, you'll I'm see. Not buying you'll none see of this. very similar. I'm like, not buying right. none of this. I guarantee you, Devontae Adams could hold his own. 
on a on a NBA court. You're you're out of your mind. He'd be playing I'm in the NBA. He wouldn't mind. be playing receiver. <laughs> this is how you know they wouldn't be playing in the NFL. I, That's it's I just a fact, different, man. Some people just don't like the the sport. You know what I mean? Like you didn't play basketball. It's because you didn't like it. Yeah, but you didn't have you didn't have the skill set. Well, yeah, I, and I like hitting people. That's what I'm good at. Well, there I don't, you go. Yeah, and they call fouls in the the NBA saw. But anyways, they, you, listen. They, who, why can't Devontae Adams have that kind of mentality? Like, oh, I just love football more. Because he's a receiver and he's not getting the. <laughs> there's no chance. I'm not buying this any up. of this. I'm You're not buying of any of this for a single second. There is no chance any NFL player. You're trying to tell me that Tyreek Hill can't go out on the NBA court. No. Yeah. What? You, I mean, no, no. <laughs> What? No. Zero percent chance. Zero? He'd be playing in the NBA if he could. I don't think you understand this. They're making way more money. They're not bashing their heads in for a living. There's not even a question of this. I think Athletically, does he have it? Yeah. There's guys in the league that are athletically gifted enough to do it, but they're just not as good. Otherwise, they would be doing it. I don't know. I think, uh, I think each situation is different. And uh, you could say that a guy just doesn't love the game like he loves football. No, I'm not buying it. <laughs> I love football. If I could go out there and be an eighth man on the basketball player coming off the bench, I would take that gig in a second. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think that's real. I don't think that's true, man. I don't think you could do it. You just would. I rather three, be an eighth man off the bench making the exact same amount of money I'm making playing center in the NFL. Come on, Travis. Nope. I don't think you're doing it. You're crazy. I don't think you're doing it. I'm doing it in a second. It's the same. It's the same. Sixers, if you guys need any bruisers out there, (laughs) Sixers, if you guys need some bruisers out there, I don't know how many reason. Go ahead. I don't know. I don't know if there's a big market for a six three bruiser down in the paint in the end of NBA, but I'm your guy. Listen for for Jason Kelsey in Philadelphia. I'd be. They they'll probably go the extra miles just for you. I don't know. It's the I same reason, but your, the your, your your argument's the same reason why you didn't go to Colgate. You could have went to Colgate, been in the band, played lac- lacrosse, and had a half scholarship, but instead you walked on to Cincinnati because you love yeah. football more. Well, yeah. I mean, there is something that's crazy. I do think um... – First of all, ladies and gentlemen, how wild is that story? Jason almost went to Colgate. Well, I don't know if it was – I almost played football at Colgate, too. Uh, oh, that's what it was. But it, I, there was it was going to be hard to get into Colgate grade wise. I think yeah. they were making it happen, and it could have happened. But um, yeah, I uh, I saw Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the movie Rudy and realized it can't be done, motivated. and that I'm going to go walk on in a D1 program. No, I mean obviously there's 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 more of a future going to a Division one school playing football. And I just really wanted to compete with the best people in the world at football. And I thought I was good enough to. So I went and did that. Um, that's, I mean, I would have had a blast going and playing lacrosse at Colgate and going and playing football at Colgate. It would have been a, an unbelievable time. Um, but not as fun as I'm having right now. All right now. Before we get to the rest of the show, we're going to shout out one of our uh, sponsors right now, Athletic Greens. Ooh. Not going to lie, this is one that I had not taken until they sent us uh, free samples to try out, but it's one that I take every day now, and I feel like it's making a difference. How are you feeling? Like, what What is the difference in, in how you're feeling? Are you a, are you just a green juice guy? It makes you feel like you're getting all your vitamins. Not yet. Well, I mean, the color does help. It's not juice, though. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bunch of uh, chopped up pieces of uh, greens, I think. That's why it's called Athletic Greens. Okay. Got some probiotics in there. It's got all your nutrients. I feel good. I feel like it's making me feel better throughout the day. I have good energy. I feel like my skin and hair look better, which All right now. let me tell you, doesn't always look the case. <laughs> I feel like for a multivitamin, uh, usually it's like a pill and it feels like it's just like very processed thing. Athletic greens being a powder of just basically chopped up pieces of things that you would eat for some reason makes it feel like it's healthier and uh, better for my system. Nice. I was just going to ask you, is it easy to keep up with? It is. It's super easy. You just take a scoop a day in the morning before you've had breakfast. Um, I usually do it when I'm on my way out the door. If you guys listening are interested 
And uh, for something simple to start your day off, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. And all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash new heights. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash new heights to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. It's green. It's got to be good. Got to be. But let's move on to players' insights and stories throughout the NFL, baby. All righty. Well, this just happened. Breaking news, even though this is going to air tomorrow, but this is breaking news for us. We're just finding this out. Adam Schefter, former number one, number one overall pick, Baker Mayfield, has My been guy. claimed by – who do you think? Don't, don't read it. Don't read it. I already read it. You already read That's it? That's crazy. Damn. Yeah, I I thought there was a chance he might be going that's to crazy. the uh, 49ers. He's claimed who, by the, the I thought this all was going down so yeah. that he could go to the 49ers. That's what everybody was kind of alluding to. Uh, not Sean McVay. Has been claimed by the Los Angeles Rams. Mayfield is expected to fly to LA by tonight and could play this Thursday. Wow. Wow. Dude. Court, this is, we've we've talked about this on the pod this before. This is crazy. Guys going and playing immediately for other teams, mm. not on unha- like oh. You're going to go play running back? Yeah, you can get that done. You're going to play D-line? Yeah, you can get that done. He's going to go play quarterback on a short week. I mean, yeah. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Well, I am going to be tuned in if he's playing. There is no question about it. I cannot no wait to watch this. No uh, question. Yeah. And, uh, I, I thought he for sure was going to the 49ers, but um, obviously they're pretty – Happy with a Ooh, Purdy's play. This is this is in division. Did McVeigh do this to just because he has to clear to waivers? It? Did he block it so they would have to play the rookie? A little are chess? Rams, are is he Rams, playing chess? They are, are they, out of it. They are, they're out of they it, right? They're not worried they're about this year at this they're point. I mean, they just put they did this, just put Stafford on IR, so they needed a quarterback. Yeah, and, and like a, a, they needed to add a quarterback to the roster. Yeah, and maybe they can. Ba- uh, Baker Mayfield's been. Really good in this league. He struggled this year. He's, he's been in but this maybe offense. They'll take a stab on it. Maybe they find a diamond in the rough for their offense. And uh, I don't think that this is for this year, though. I don't think they're like trying to block the 49ers for making a run this year because I think they're out of it already. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? McVay and Shanahan, they were on the same coaching staff over they were. in Washington. They were. So I played against both of them that, a lot. that rival. There's a little bit of... I I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking they just needed a quarterback, and Baker Mayfield is a pretty rare opportunity guy with his caliber, uh, expert experience, and um, uh, success becomes available out of nowhere in the middle of a season when you're struggling uh, offensively the way the Rams have been because of uh, Stafford being out. So, yeah. I can't wait to watch it, though. And I, I hope, hope he plays he, in two days. I, can't, I, I still can't believe does. this. I hope, That's he, not, I hope he balls, man. I hope he dude, balls, man. He's, if anybody can do it, Baker let's go, Mayfield baby. Can. Let's go, baby. I, that, this is a great blending of personalities, too. Baker and Sean McVay. Let's go, man. Dude, that's a lot let's of personality go. right there. That, that I can't wait QB to watch this. It's going to be fun, All without right. a doubt. Reactions to Andrew Luck. Another quarterback. Finally speaking on retirement. The NFL feature by uh, Seth Wickersham. Um, retired because he's uh, he says that playing in the NFL is not the healthiest way to live. And um, I'm just a little surprised <laughs> he didn't know that before he started. <laughs> you you made the comment earlier, man. It's the it's the fortune of playing in playing quarterback. Man. Yeah. It, you don't realize you don't realize what real football is <laughs> until you start getting fucking rocked. When you play quarterback, yeah. you're like, man, this isn't this isn't a bad gig. And then you realize how about it takes you how many years in the NFL to realize this isn't the healthiest way to live. I moved I moved to quarterback and have had ten sur- or moved from quarterback and have ten surgeries since I moved from quarterback. Yeah, uh, the the difference in the toll on the body is way different. And way more extreme, but at the same time, once you get to the National Football League, you got grown men hitting you, you got grown men tossing you around. Um, you're going to catch that wave regardless of the other yeah. position that you play. Um, well, listen, man, th- this article is awesome. I highly recommend it. Uh, they got a podcast version of it as well, which I was listening to and I'm almost fully done with. Um, you know, 
Andrew's a highly cerebral individual. Yeah. He's and highly very, respected, man. Yeah. Highly respected. Was an unbelievable player uh, in college and in the NFL and before the he NFL, started yeah. getting hurt, especially. Um, and I think that, you know, this is a an awesome opportunity to get a look into um, what goes into playing in the NFL, especially from a mental standpoint. Um, it's some things that are, I think, a lot of the times not talked about. You know, the whole mental health wave that's gone over the country, um, all of a sudden it's it's acceptable to talk about these things. It's acceptable to talk about, um, you know, things that have that bring anxiety. It's acceptable to talk about things that, like, bring superstar depression. players potentially struggle with, right? For years, you were told if you talk about this, you're weak. Yeah. You're, you're told if you bring it up, it's not acceptable. And and now it is, and we're seeing some unbelievably. It was, it was almost looked at as an excuse. Yeah, like, and, uh, like you're you're making excuses for things. You yeah, know? and and we've seen it with a number of my teammates, and, more, and most recently with Lane Johnson last year. We're seeing, uh, you know, semblance of that in this article from Andrew Luck. Yeah. And man, there's some incredibly inspirational, great things to take away from these conversations. Um, obviously, it led to Andrew retiring, right? Like. The, after the last, like during the last preseason game of uh, his last year, like right before a season. I mean, you want to talk about a tough position to put a team in, but um, I think he goes over it unbelievably. And, and I mean, it is hard to navigate these things, especially when you're struggling. Yeah. And uh, I got a lot of respect for him being open and candid about it. Um, I thought Seth did an unbelievable job with the story um, and getting it. Uh, yeah. being a skier, I mean, we apparently. all we all were extremely curious on what exactly went down. It kind of they caught us all by surprise, and I, I think what this does is is just kind of open up in uh, in to us what exactly you know luck was going through in those moments mentally, physically, physically, and uh, it gives you a broader spectrum on exactly what's going on throughout the NFL on a weekly and yearly basis. He talks about trying to overcome his labrum surgery, his labrum injury. Um, I mean, I've had three, when, and, when I, you, and I can't even throw a ball. I can't even play catch like that right now. And, and all of them are different, so right? Yeah. Not no, no knee surgery is the same. Even if it's an ACL injury, you have no idea what that other person's going through to try and get back on the field. Yeah. And there are things about this game that are depressing and hard to get over. Injuries are hard to deal with. It's the hardest part about this game, probably to overcome. You got to especially when it's a, a, a year ender or a career or a season ender, um, you know, a, a major catastrophic injury that's going to take you time to work your way back. And even when you get back, you're not guaranteed that it's ever going to be the same. No. And, um, you know, there was a great quote. I can't remember what book I read it in, but you know, when you're trying to figure out what you should do for a career, um, you got to figure out what are the things you don't like about that career and whether you can handle that. Right. Everybody wants to be a professional singer. Everybody wants to be uh, the, the, you know, in a rock band. Right. You know, how many people want to tour for months on end playing on the bus. same song over every and single, over every and other over night. and practicing relentlessly over and over? You know, that's there are things that, that sounds draining. If you yeah, being there on the sh at, at the show in front of thousands of people, Sweet. everybody wants to do that. Let's do that. <laughs> everybody wants to be that sign guy. me up are you willing to do the other stuff the stuff that's not fun um yeah. for everyone and uh he wasn't ready to do it anymore you know he wasn't he, he didn't want to do, go through any of the pain anymore he didn't want to go through the grind he wasn't happy with the person that he was becoming by having to do all that in front of his wife and children and, and family yeah. um you know all of these things factor into your 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 ment your mental well being, yeah. Your your happiness. Your and if you're not happy, if you're not if you don't want to do it, you're not doing a service to anybody Preach by trying way. to go do it. It was selfishly an unselfish decision. Yeah. If you're not all in, man, I get it, dog. It's this not going to be it's good. It's not for everybody. It's not for no. everybody. And it it doesn't have to be for everybody. But nope. um, obviously it was, it, we, it was for him for a long time. Yeah. And then it wasn't. And when it wasn't, it became evident. He had great support systems in his life uh, to make it, you know, courageous enough to pull the trigger. Um, I know it hurt that Colts team yeah. uh, in the eyes of a lot of people, but who knows, man? If he was at that point mentally, like you just said, you know, it's going to be. Who knows what would have happened if he would have even tried to 
uh, play that fa- that last year. But, um, you know, I think uh, in hindsight, it sounds like you made a great decision for him uh, and, and for his family. And yeah. um, in all respects to you, Andrew, for coming out with this, man. Yeah, I know that's that shit isn't easy, man. Be yeah. able to talk about stuff like this for sure. I think as I get closer to retirement, this also his especially home with me. Uh, cause these are things that I struggle with every off season. You know, are you willing to do it? Any, uh, is it still worth it? Is it like, and for some reason I'm still in the f- mindset that it has been, uh, this year has been unbelievably uh, a highlight so far. And I hope it continues to be one. Uh, but these are, these are questions. These are things that all guys contemplate. And, um, I thought it was awesome to, to, to hear, his thought process, what went into all of the decision making he had to make, um, yeah, just overall was really well written and well said. So, hats off, brother. Back to his not healthiest way to live, man. If you want to be the best at anything, it's going to be hard to do it in the healthiest way. It's a price you got to pay, man. You know, no matter what you want to do, Law of the football, price tag. football, obviously going to be incredibly draining physically. But, you know, whether it's football, whether it's, you know, the Tour de France, you think it's healthy to go bike that many miles over that time frame? No chance. That ain't healthy. Being a a boxer, the type of weight lifting, the, the, yeah. Even going to business, Elon Musk sleeps like four hours a night or something like that. Yeah. Like it's, you know, it takes time. It takes investment. Um, You have to be an extreme individual to be the best and to, and to play at that level. And that's hard to sustain and it's not healthy to sustain in a lot of ways. Some ways it is, some ways it isn't. But, um, he said it earlier, man, there ain't nobody out here at the, at the top of what they're doing, sleeping nine hours a day and getting all their meals in and getting all the, you know what I mean? It just doesn't work like that. You got to yeah. take it. You got to do something different. You got to do something extra and you got to put in a lot of, you got to devote a lot of time and a lot of effort to, to whatever it is your passion is to be to the be- best at it. To be the best, you're going to be met with stress, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's, you know, health. Um, you got, I mean, that's how it happens. If, if you, you're going to be competing with everybody else. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm happy he's happy. How about that? I'm right there with you, brother. All right, coaching. A couple of interesting interactions with coaches this past uh, week on the sideline. Mike McDaniels tells Tua, no, I fucked up. Yeah. Um, Got to love when a head coach yeah. does it, man. For, well, Mike McDaniels, I think, is maybe one of the most um, eccentric yeah, uh, coaches I've seen in a while. Um, He's just like that stand-up a, comedian that has, like, the dry humor and has, like, the same tone yeah. going through everything that Dude, just catches is, you off guard with, like, these. I love it. I love everything about <laughs> these things that he's doing. It's these cool. punchlines. He, he's a unique individual. But, um, you know – it's got to be real, though. Like, if you're really fucked up, I think that's a great thing. You know, accountability is what you need. And uh, when the coach himself does that and is comfortable enough saying that to his teammates, the teammates respect it. Because we know, right? Yeah. Like, the players know, hey, that might not have been the best thing to do right there, coach. Uh, and if you don't ex- ex- accept accountability for that, man, then all of a sudden the player's like, you know, I, I mean, if the coach ain't accepting accountability, what am I, you know? That ain't my fault that I just, you know, did this yeah. or did that, and so that comes all all comes from the top down. So I thought that was awesome. Uh, yeah, Kyle Shanahan, uh, you know, former uh, head coach that Mike McDaniel's was under, called out the 49ers D line Nick Bosa. Well, the D line Nick Bosa responded yes, after his did. third sack, came back and told Shanahan, "Don't talk shit about me anymore." <laughs> <laughs> that's obviously got to be a playful relationship, right? You don't those those two aren't just you know what I mean. They don't hate each other. There's no, no. animosity right there. That's obviously just a way they communicate. Um, I've met no. Shanahan, thought the world of him. Met Bosa, thought the world of him. So I don't think these guys have you know bad reps or have the have the you know the anger to go at each other like that towards each other. I think hey. it was just a coach calling out the D line to step it up and Nick Bosa answering. And letting them know, like, listen, don't don't put it on us no more, man. Well, let's be honest. This. Let's be honest. He, it was after his third sack. He said, "Don't talk shit to me anymore." If I'm uh, if I'm Kyle Shanahan, I'm talking shit every game. What are you talking about? <laughs> God damn it, Nick, you suck. It's kind of like the water boy. <laughs> sack, sack, sack. 
Gatorade. <laughs> Why? Ma- Don't say nothing about my mama. I think, uh, yeah, I thought it was, I mean, I, listen, this is awesome. It, well, you, you like, you love to see it when a, uh, when a coach challenges a group, challenges an individual, and then they step up and play better. Yeah. Um, that's the, that's what you look for. That's the relationship you want. You know, you don't want the relationship where the coach does that and then it goes the opposite way. It goes in the yeah. tank. That's how you know it's a good relationship. Um, so I thought that was an out- outstanding interaction. I think that um, the best coaches are not the same way with every player. And they know which players they can get into, which players they need to love up. Like you, there's There are coaches that the best coaches are just emotionally intelligent and know how to handle players. And they interact with players based on what – that player needs. That's your job as a head coach. How can I motivate players the best way possible? Well, not everybody is motivated by the same thing. Yeah. Some players are motivated when you get in them and they play better. They play with anger. They, the frustration fuels them. Some players, when you do that, you know it's uh, uh, they lose their own self confidence. So some players you need to build up. Some players you need to say, "Hey, man, you'll get it next time. You got this." Right? Yeah. And and it takes the best coaches know how each player is going to respond and yeah. what is the best thing for that guy. And uh, so I don't, I don't, but I think, um, you know, there's probably a lot of people saying that like the coaching landscape has changed. The players coming, that coaches are different. I think it's more that players are different. I think that players coming into the league are very different. So coaches are changing to better adapt to getting the most out of those players. Coaches are, if you're a good coach, your coaching style is based on the players that you have and based on the personnel at your disposal, coaches and players. Yeah. Um, so, and I do think players are, are different. I think, you know, obviously uh, we're seeing more of a uh, different day and age. Yeah. It's the, just notoriously football coaches have been known as the getting your ass fire spark a, you know, spark a fire in you to try and get you going. And that doesn't always work for everybody. No. You know, some guys, like you say, get uh, almost rebel from from actions like that, uh, especially if it's if you're singling them out in a situation. Um, I know I, I, I there's been times this year that Coach Reed has gotten on my ass to get me going. Uh, the last one I could think of was probably the Chargers game. Uh, I got doinked with the ball on on third and short, right in my freaking shoulder, and I didn't even have my head around. And I came off the ball, and Coach Reed's just looking at me like, "Hey, you know, get your head out of your ass. Let's yep. go, get this thing going." And uh, you know, as a leader, I take accountability. I answer that challenge. Mm-hmm. I know, I you know, I know, I know, Coach Reed. I got all the trust that Coach Reed knows exactly what he's doing. And if he he says that my my leaders need to step up or this guy right here needs to play better, I'm going to answer that bell, man. Yeah, I, I've never liked the term players coach. I've never liked the term. I don't even know what the other one is, like authoritative uh, coach. I don't know. I don't, I don't but know. I I think that you know every coach not is, every every, players, every coach is every coach is a players coach. That doesn't mean you need to be buddy buddy. That doesn't mean you got to be the best friend of the player. Right, that means it's your job as a coach to get the best out of that player, and that's every coach's job, right? Yeah. And it's a two way street. Don't get me wrong, but you're the coach. You're the one who sets the tone of that relationship. Um, and different guys do it differently, and a lot of it comes down to your own personality. Bill Belichick, I would not say, is a buddy buddy. You know, it doesn't seem at least right, but he knows how to get the most out of his guys. And he brings guys in that he wants, and he's phenomenal at it. He's the reason he's been the most successful tenured coach in the NFL, probably the best defensive coach of the modern era. Um, there's a reason why he gets the best out of his players, yeah. right? Andy Reid the same way. Um, you know, I think that all of these guys have something to them that they know how to get each and every guy that they play with um, to play their best football, whether it's motivation whether it's using them properly all of these things factor in but all of that is what a player's coach is so to me to answer the question of is our coaches changing coaches are changing because players are changing now we're going to go into the last coaching topic which is that peyton and eli manning have been announced that they will be the head coaches for the pro bowl this year peyton will coach the afc and eli will obviously coach the nfc um, I'll tell you what, the NFL brothers are having one hell of an NFL season right yeah, now across yeah. the board, across yeah. the board. 
Got to say, um, we obviously were fortunate to go on the Manning cast. Two outstanding uh, coaches are going to be here for the Pro Bowl. I don't know. Um, what are they coaching? Is it is it the seven on seven game? Or I guess it's the seven on seven, and I don't know. I mean, we're still kind of waiting there to even see a seven on seven game. So there's going to be a. F- I think it's seven on seven or it flag. A, it's one of the two. There's definitely one of those. I think that's the same thing. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, but I don't know if there's going to be other things involved that they're coaching, right? Like they've said there's going to be other activities and games, um, and I would assume they would coach all of it, right? Right. That's what I would assume. Who knows? It'll, it'll be Who interesting. Knows there's much strategy in all the other games. I don't. It, I don't it'll know. be interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll. Either they're going to be coaching or just there for moral moral support. Either way, think, though, both of them think, have the personality to make it fun, huh? Do you think Peyton will be a coach in like the Tony Dungy mold, and Eli will be a coach in the uh, uh, Col- uh, uh, Coughlin Caldwell. mold? I was about to say Caldwell, but uh, yeah, yeah, Coughlin okay. mold. I mean. Coughlin mode might not work best for seven on seven, though. I think Peyton's got the edge if it's seven on seven. <laughs> Peyton's going to start having his guys work on those signals, man. That'd be pretty crazy. They just yeah, came but, out just nothing but signals the whole time. That Sorry, might be never. a that might be a big problem though, because I guarantee you Eli knows those signals. <laughs> you think so? Are you kidding me? No way. It's gonna be fun. That's all I know. Listen, We've talked about it before. Into it. It'll be I'm ball. really happy that the NFL opted to go in a new route for this Pro Bowl. Um, I'm, ex- I think, I'm excited to see what what ends up being, you know, the outcome for sure. I think fans are going to enjoy it more because people are going to be able to pour more into it. They're not going to be hesitant or playing soft. Like this seven on seven event is all of a sudden going to be legitimate full speed. It's going to be ex- sure. it's going to be exciting for sure. Um, so yeah. Can't wait to watch these guys in their coaching debuts. All righty. Speaking of coaching, college football, our alma mater, Cincinnati, has hired a head coach. Let's go, Scott. Scott Satterfield is the next you see? Head football coach of the University of Cincinnati. Um, I what do don't you think, know Trev? Much about him, man. Heard him talking has a has a nice little southern draw to him. Yeah, uh, and uh, that's about all I know. I know that he wasn't outstanding at Louisville in terms of record. Uh, he did win some ball games at uh, at Appalachian State uh, yep. the five years that he was there. Um, but he takes some big Luke shoes Fickle, to fill. Man. Yeah, yeah, big takes shoes over to fill. Luke Fickle, man, that's uh, the biggest. The biggest thing that I thought Luke brought was that family atmosphere that we had. Uh, when we were there, he had those guys playing for each other, playing hard, yeah. uh, practicing hard. You know, you look at you watch those practices and you're like, man, these guys are getting after it. You know, there's yeah. there's a certain level of intensity and yeah, he and brought he brought toughness and back, effort. I thought yeah. they 100%. they were Cincinnati was a tough football team um, and it was evident in every game they played for Luke Fickle. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's, they're sure going to miss him. Went on to Wisconsin. Wish uh, Coach Fickle nothing but the best. Nothing uh, but, but the best. Hey, man, we're on, we're on to Coach Satterfield. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little upset. Given uh, the fact that Jeff Saturday has uh, entered coaching so easily and so quickly that I was uncalled. I think I deserved a call. <laughs> JC, you're in the middle of a season. I think I deserved no, a call. You know, at least a, I don't know. You know, maybe I mean, you want to come back and exactly just, you know, float it out fans. there. You know, former centers being uh, head coaches. You would have did it. I don't know. I probably would have said I can't make that decision right now, guys, but <laughs> I appreciate the phone call. <laughs> you heard it, you see. Yeah, hey, that's funny. Well, if it if it comes up again, you know, shout out to Scott. Hopefully he's there forever and he builds the program up even more than it's been built. But I'll tell you what, man, you see, <laughs> you got a guy that's sitting right here waiting on it, man. Oh, God. <laughs> well, um Coach Satterfield plays his former team. They play Louisville in the Fenway Bowl in a few in a few weeks. Yeah, in Boston. That's he's really gonna be on the other sideline to the team that he was just the head coach of. Uh, quick turn. That's turnaround. pretty wild. That's it pretty is. wild. I don't know if that's has that ever happened. For uh, a team not that, that I can remember. He's like I'm not going to say he's he's. I think he's going up. You know, I think we're a better program than Louisville, but obviously I'm biased. Well, yeah, uh, Louisville's in you, the, usually you see a coach leave a program is because he's either going up or he gets fired and he's going. You know, he's got to re kind of start it or get it re going again. I think this yeah. is like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. If you're, it if seems you're pretty lateral. Team, same team in the bowl game. It's kind of 
You know, obviously Steven Louisville Gale, right, right now is in a bigger conference in the ACC, but Cincinnati joins the Big 12 next year, so they'll be in a power a conference, conference as well. Is it a better conference? ACC? Well, it's better than the American. Yeah. But Cincinnati, like we just said, is going to be in the Big 12 next year. I don't even know who's good in the ACC this year. Clemson, isn't it? Who's the good know. team in the ACC? I'm not going to lie. I have not watched a lot of college football this year. Um, I I might argue that the AAC has more top 25 teams. I'm not going to make that statement. Uh, Me neither, I have not seen I don't it. Know, I don't know what it looks like. I know North Carolina was solid. Uh, that's about it, though. <sighs> well, either way, I, I'm interested to see how it works out. Super pumped up that we have a head coach now. And, uh, you can get to work, man. That's right. Get to work. Starts Let's go with, UC. Starts with Louisville and the Fenway Bowl, baby. Let's go UC. UC. Moving on to other coaching news in the college football world. There is a new coach at Colorado. Prime coach time. Deion Sanders, baby. Woo! We were just talking about all the great things he was doing over at Jackson State with his two sons. And now they are all the Buffaloes. Yeah. Colorado Buffaloes. Uh, Talking, talking to the team for the first time, said some interesting things, kind of just laid, laid the law and told them, you know, if you don't like what's going on, enter the transfer portal, man. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm certainly going to watch these games. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm locked in, man. I, I'm, think, I'm uh, already a, uh, I already followed Dion and, and everything that he does uh, outside of the football world. But what he does, and like I said earlier, in terms of, you know, leading young men, I think this is an awesome, awesome uh, – what is it? Uh, an awesome grab for Colorado. I think yeah. what he's going to do for that program is exactly what he did for Jackson State's program, and that's put it on a, a mantle and a pedestal of you know just pride and success, man. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about an unbelievable recruiter? This is a guy that was uh, not only one of the best NFL players of all time, but did so with a style and a in, in a creative uh, way that uh, changed it as a player. And he's doing the same thing as a coach. We've talked about this already in this podcast. He is really. Uh, kind of change, changing the coaching landscape of what a head coach does, says, how they are, and um, he's doing it his way. And that's, what's so, that's what I respect so much about it. He's being authentically himself and coaching the way he wants to coach. And it, uh, it's coming through to his players. It obviously worked at Jackson State, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it works at Colorado. Um, obviously, it's going to be uh, uh, you know, a, a step up in the level of uh, teams he's going to play every single year. Uh, but man, he's also, he's going to be a recruiting monster again. He's going to get great players in there. And, uh, I, I have a hard time thinking these guys are not going to play well. They're going to play hard. That's for dang sure. Yeah. So, um, really interested to see, uh, what happens in the PAC 12 with prime time coming to be a head coach <laughs> of Colorado. Prime time going West coach prime time. All righty. All right. Uh, college playoff is set. Georgia, Michigan, TCU, and Ohio. Uh, Ohio State. The Ohio, Ohio State. State. The Sorry. Um, well. It's very interesting. Very, it's very interesting. Yeah. It's very interesting that TCU lost their Pac-12 tourney. Or, I'm sorry, their Big 12 tourney yep. and still got in. Yeah. I mean, they barely lost, though. Lost by a quarterback sneak, some would say. I don't know. I, that's why I think it should go to more teams, man. That's why they're expanding to 12 more teams. Uh, I think it was unfair for a team like Kansas State to win their, win their uh, what is it, conference the way they did over a team that was in the playoffs and they don't get the chance to go. It's like they, yeah. they won it for no reason almost. you know. I and, guess. I'm, but but I listen, at, at what point is it going to stop? There's always going to be a team that doesn't is going to be on the fringe and they're going to be like, oh, you know. Expanding to twelve teams. Oh, the, oh man, the 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 such and such whatevers they well, should make have been it in make it the make the conferences like divisions. You know, if you win your conference, you're in. I just think there's always going to be a level of unfairness, no matter how you do this stuff. It's not fair. Yeah, I don't. I deserve to be in the that that tournament. Whatever. Um, <laughs> you're sick. So, I do think. Expanding it to 12 teams is going to allow any team that's undefeated to get in, which you've seen in years past where there's been, you know, smaller schools and stuff like that that have done really well, but they just don't have the strength of schedule to warrant being a top four team. So there is going to yeah. be some better. And to be honest, as a as a spectator, I can't wait to watch this. That I mean, I are awesome. The college football series is one of the f- uh, playoff football series is one of the few things I actually watch in college football anymore. Yeah. Uh, 
I just don't watch a lot of college football in general outside of my alma mater and when there's a good game going on. But uh, a playoff going between 12 teams, that's going to be fun. I can't wait to participate in watching that. So, Uh, yeah. It's I know I'm excited like to watch it. Georgia That's all Michigan I know. Uh, college football play, uh, college football championship. That's what it's looking like unless Ohio State can find a way. As an Ohio guy, I hope Ohio State and Michigan win just so I can see that Ohio game State, again. Yeah, for the you, na- Are you kidding me? I would love to see it. I would that love would to see it. That would be an awesome game to win. It's witness. hard to blow a team out twice. I know that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see if Ohio State can get past Georgia without uh their number 2 receiver, man. Yeah. All right. Arguably their number one. All right, let's get it. Let's get to the New Heights Stamp of the Week, Trav. New Heights Stamp of the Week, baby. This is where we shine light on anybody taking their game to New Heights, specifically in the football world. But uh, we don't keep this thing in just the football or just the NFL. So, uh, Jason, you got somebody that uh, that took their game to New Heights? Heck yeah, man. I'm going Brock Purdy, baby. 49ers. Ooh, pretty um, good. Yeah, he played pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Had a nice little completion percentage, 25 for 37, 210 yards with two touchdown passes. Um, he kept the 49ers rolling. The 49ers have been playing really good as of late. Uh, their defense has been phenomenal, uh, and their offense is really starting to step it up. Uh, My guy, and it was, G, can't catch a break, man. I know yeah, this I know. is about Brock. I know. I know this is about Brock. It's tough. God damn, he can't it's catch tough. a freaking break, man. Tough for Jimmy G, and uh, but you know, I'm really happy this kid went in there and played well. Took his game to new heights on a big stage against a great defense. Miami's defense is There's really no freaking good. Yeah, they got a great defensive line. Uh, they got some awesome DBs. I mean, they're they're a pretty complete roster, and uh, they got after him pretty good. So they didn't miss a beat. Uh, so shout out to you, uh, Mister Purdy. Brock Purdy taking his game to new heights. I'm going with the man. That got his old GM fired. I don't know if we've ever came across wow. a single individual that has gotten a GM fired for trading him. Well, we don't know team. if that's – let's not be – The know irony is pretty fired. wild, and uh, whoever the Titans GM is that just got fired, I'm sorry I have to bring even more attention to yeah, this, the, but A.J. Brown just took his game to new heights, did something I've never heard of, and that's go so crazy on his old team that he got the GM fired that traded him. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we just took it there. All right. There we go. It's it's out there. Shout out, shout out to Swole Batman taking his Swole game to Batman. New Heights, man. Eight receptions, 119, two TDs. A routine game. Routine game for A.J. Brown. Um, Added one GM gone. Jesus. All right. Let's look ahead. <laughs> let's go ahead. I hope I don't get fired tomorrow. Yeah. Well, everyone's going to get ever, fired eventually. Ever. I hope I never get fired. Yeah, well, you either, you either get fired or you ball. quit. It's, those are the only two options. All right, here we go. Look ahead to week week 14. We got Eagles at Giants. Yeah, big game. Start of a three-game road trip, man. And yeah. it starts with a, a, a division rival that's been playing their tail off, man. You guys finally get to see him. Uh, our guy Mike Kafka and the New York football Mike, Giants are playing Mike their tail Kafka. off, man. Um, you know, Brian Dayball. You know, Nick Sirianni both coached in uh, Kansas City in 2012. I did not know that, but yeah. uh, very cool. Very cool to see, you know, two coaches who have been on the same coaching staff go at it again. You know, there's always a little bit more at stake uh, when you're when you're playing against guys that you're familiar with. And then uh, the Giants coming off a 2020 tie with the, the only team you guys have lost to, the Washington Commanders. Commanders. So yeah. hard not to say commandos. I know. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I mean, obviously they've been playing their tail off, been playing, you know, tough football, as the, as everybody has in the NFC East this year. Um, what are you guys thinking going into it? Like you just said, man, it's a big game. The NFC East right now, um, I mean, there are a lot of good teams playing really good football right now. Yeah. Um, and good defenses. Uh, the Giants' defense uh, is no slouch. Uh, Wink Martindale no. – um, I'm familiar with him in his uh, Baltimore Ravens days. Uh, has them playing fast and physical. Uh, he's going to bring blitzes from all over the place. And they have great players. Um, the defensive line is star-studded. Dexter Lawrence is probably having his best season. Uh, they really, I mean, they got players all over the field. And when you combine good coaches with good players, you got a good defense. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, 
Coach Dave has them playing great on offense, along with Mike Kafka. Uh, you know, this is a team that runs the ball really well with Saquon Barkley. Um, and uh, Daniel Jones is playing some good ball. Yeah, they're, they're well-rounded. And, um, you know, there's a reason why they've been successful this year. They're a really, really good football team. And uh, we're going to have to go out there and play a really good game on the road uh, to pull this one out. You know it, man. If the playoffs started today, three out of the four NFC East teams would be in it. And that's uh, that's saying a lot compared to how, where everybody was pointing at the position or at, at the division going. Yeah, who would have thought, man? man? NFC East weakest division the last maybe two seasons. All of a sudden, uh, strongest maybe. I think so. You get a few coaching changes. All of a sudden, the uh, the cultures change a little bit, man. Yeah. Well, it certainly made our life uh, really hard. So, all righty, you Alrighty. guys, Chiefs at Broncos division it's game. Little in division game for you as well. Broncos week, baby. Donkeys week. Flexed out of prime time. Who would have thought First that? First time I've ever been flexed out of prime time, man. Pat Mahomes crazy. and the electric Andy Reid offense flexed out of prime time. Going to Broncos country. Don't say it. Don't say it. It's right now. I don't think anybody should be saying that right now, man. Let's ride. <laughs> Offense is averaging 14.3 points per game, 14 touchdowns on the season. Both are the worst in the NFL. Um, but whether one where one side is weak, the other is strong. And of course, defense ranks side, top three. With. Oh, yeah. Top three in points per game, total yards per game, third down percentage, and red zone touchdowns. As much as they want to talk about how this team is very good, they seem they sure seem to be in every single one of the games that they're playing, man. Yeah, that's um, what a good defense affords you. You're in all the games. You're in all of them, man. They they got a veteran group on the back end. Uh, they tackle very, 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 very well across the board. Uh, got a few uh, linebackers that that have came into the season with. You know, questions at that position, playing their tails off. Uh, and their D-line has always been stout. They're well coached on that side of the ball for sure. Uh, Nick faggio has got those guys playing their tails off, uh, knowing that, you know, things aren't great on the offensive side of the ball for them right now. But that doesn't mean that they can't be prideful on that, on the defensive side. And uh, we're going to have our hands full, you know, especially the way that, uh, you know, we've played the past couple games. Um, I think it's uh, it's something that, you know, it's a mentality week. You know, mm-hmm. we got to go out there and start to really put together this uh, this stretch of games here towards the end of the season to um, to get us ready for that playoff type atmosphere. You know, and uh, the biggest thing right now for us is winning the division, getting that getting getting into the playoffs and solidifying getting into the playoffs. And um, I'm pretty sure if we win this game this week, we are in. Yeah, and, if you guys uh, wa- you guys haven't lost a division game yet, right? Mm-mm. Yeah. No, they're big games. Division's always big. Always, always big, and the and sure enough, they're always pretty close, uh, more times than not. So we'll uh, we'll have our hands full with one of the best defenses in the league. But um, I got all the faith in Coach Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes. That we'll figure something out. Well, alrighty, that about wraps up the 16th episode of New Heights. Sheesh. Yeah, man, we're rolling through these things. We are rolling, man. Make we're sure rolling. you're subscribed on YouTube to the New Heights channel so you know when we uh, drop some new videos for you. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, make sure to check out our official merch store at homage.com slash New Heights. Once again, baby, New Heights is a Jukes original presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. And uh, don't forget to follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show to follow the clips throughout the week. And thanks to our production team, as always. We thank you guys. You guys guys. make us look way better than what we are, and we appreciate it. Boy, is that true. (laughs) Until next week, peace!